happy Wednesday, guys. Gorgeous day here in Geelong. The sun is out and I'm getting some vitamin D and a uh, beautiful view right near the beach, which is gorgeous, my favourite spot. Um, just wanted to have a quick chat around, you would have seen the title, Minimise or Maximise. And there's a strategy that we all use in different situations and one that I'm really mindful of with my clients is what they're minimizing and what they're maximizing. So you could have something that's worrying you or something negative and you can either minimize it or maximize it. You could have something potentially great, like your vision of where you want to go, the potential of your business or your career or your relationship or your finances. And you can either maximize that vision or you can minimize that vision. And it happens so quickly that I think that a lot of the times we don't even notice when it's happening. I'll give you an example. Years ago, I had this black little mark on the bottom of my foot and it was annoying me a little bit, um, but it wasn't really, you know, I thought it's just like this little black blood blister. And uh, it wasn't, it was just a bit of an annoyance. And then suddenly it got really painful and I could hardly walk on it. And I'm thinking, wow, I've, I've really got to get something, you know, I've, I've got to do something with this blood blister. And I think there's probably something stuck in there, you know, some glass or something like that. So I remember going to the hospital actually for some reason I don't know I didn't go to the doctor first I thought I, the, doc, the hospital would be the best way to go and I remember going up to the reception and saying you know I've got this blood blister something stuck in my foot and um, and they looked at it and they said well it may not be a blood blister and I'm like oh okay and it sort of threw me off a little bit, right? And I'm thinking, but it is a blood blister, isn't it? Anyway, um, the wait was too long and I ended up going to the doctors across the road. And the doctor across the road then said, you need to get an ultrasound. Uh, and he looked quite worried and concerned and I'm thinking, what? Why is he worried and concerned? It's only like a blood blister. That's all it is. And then I go in to get my ultrasound and the lady that was doing the ultrasound has this worried look on her face. She says, I'm going to have to get uh, the doctor or whoever it was. He came in and then he looked at it. They looked at each other and then I started to panic right um and he they didn't say anything and then when i finished up she's the lady said to me uh look we normally take i think two days or whatever for this but we're going to rush yours through and it'll be ready in about i think it was an hour or two hours or whatever and I suddenly thought something is seriously wrong, like something's wrong. Why do they have to rush this? And she said, look, you know, just wait around or whatever. And um, I just remember being in the car and I was in the car and I suddenly was so concerned because I thought, what is this on my foot? And I thought, is this a melanoma? right um, because one of them did mention look it could be <laughs> and I'm like is it and I remember just sitting in the car and how quickly my thoughts escalated and I'm sitting in the car and I'm thinking it has to be it has to be a, a, 
a melanoma because why are they so worried? And then I sort of looked at all the evidence that I could see and the evidence was, well, I went to the hospital and they were worried. Then I saw the, the lady that did the ultrasound and she looked worried enough to go and get you know, the guy and then the guy came in and he looked worried and then they were worried enough to say, shit, you know, we have to get the ultrasound back in, an, in two hours or so for you. And so in my head I'm going, well, that's all the evidence. So I've got to be realistic here. And so I started to panic and I started to think, okay, it's, it's probably a melanoma. And then, I, and then I said to myself, okay, so what will they do with that? They could cut that out. Or they could, maybe if it's, and then I'm saying to myself, well, well, maybe it's spread. And then they might have to chop my foot off. Well, if they have to chop my leg off, what if I haven't got a leg? What if it's spread to my other organs? And it just happened so fast. And I remember ringing another, a friend of mine who's a coach. And by that time, I was so worked up. And I really couldn't see any way out. I'm like, this is it. This is what I have to deal with. And I'd, I'd, I'd escalated it to, you know, from a blood blister that I thought it was initially to having something spread all over my body. <laughs> um, and it happened so quickly. And then I remember going in, I remember getting the message to say, oh, the results have come through. Uh, and so I went back into the doctor's surgery, uh, doctor's room and I'm waiting for the doctor and I had a, a book and I was so distracted that I remember sitting there and then realising that my book was upside down. <laughs> I wasn't even looking at the book. I was just so beside myself. Um, and then when I went into, when the, the doctor called me in, he said uh, that, you know, it's you've got something like a toll stuck in your foot and I didn't hear him because I was so stuck in my world of bad news that I didn't even hear what he said in fact he said something like did you hear what I said and I said no and he said you've got like a tile or something stuck in your foot and we have to cut it out and normally but someone cutting something in my foot I'd be like what the? and I was so relieved that I'm like, yeah, well, you can cut it out. But at the same time, I was a bit in shock because I'd created this story that was so real in those two hours that it might as well have been real because I felt all the feelings of those emotions. My heart was racing. You know, I'd, I'd already foreseen a future that was looking you know, pretty challenging and it wasn't even true. And so this is what we do in life is that we're so good at either minimizing something or maximizing something. Someone that lives in depression or anxiety a lot is so good at maximizing, but what they're maximizing often is the wrong things. It's maximizing a problem. It's maximizing any challenge or problem that they foresee, even if it hasn't even happened yet, even if sometimes there's no evidence of it happening. It's maximized rather than maybe maximizing all the great stuff that could happen in your life. So it is so powerful. And I just wanted to give that message because I had a client yesterday message me max and she was maximizing she was you know everything was big it was like oh all the negative that was, it was big and you know it was, it's all about then reducing that problem and the way that we do that is by asking better questions so when I was maximizing my problems that I had the thing on my foot that they thought may be a melanoma I was asking questions like, well, what if it's spread? What about, you know, and so in my head, I'm, I'm directing my thoughts in that direction. So be really mindful of your thoughts. Be really mindful of the questions that you're asking and learn to ask better questions because you're either minimizing or maximizing situations in your head 
and be mindful of what direction you want that to go. If you're looking at your vision and you're thinking, what is it that I want in life? Then start maximizing. You know, so instead of minimizing, oh, you know, you might say, well, how could I ever do that? You know, you know, and you might say in that tone, even in your head, right? Or I've never done it before, so why should I? You know, I, I probably wouldn't succeed. Or you might say statements like that, and catch yourself in those moments because they're the the things, they're the words and statements that will keep you small, and will squash those dreams and aspirations that you've got. So it's really about being able to say, "Hey, let me play. Let me." Let me say, hey, if it's not me, who else could it be that could create this amazing book or or if you wanted to stand on stage and speak to 2,000 people or create a business or whatever it is that you want to do, be your own best coach and, and, and really maximize those times because we're so freaking good at minimizing those moments. And then if we look at our challenges, the same thing, let's really be mindful of minimizing these challenges. And that doesn't mean that, and I'm, what I'm, not, I'm not saying that we're pretending things aren't there, but what I'm saying is that we ask better questions so that we can empower ourselves in those moments. So there might be challenging situations, but you can either say stuff like, which will maximize the problem by saying, oh, why me? And you'll answer a question. A question. So if something really challenging is happening, you go, why me? What have I done wrong? Well, you'll come up with answers. You'll say, oh, well, what have you done wrong? Your, head, your unconscious mind will say, well, this is what you've done wrong. This is what you've done wrong. This is what you've done wrong. Rather than maybe some better quality questions you could say is, how can I make this better? What can I learn from this? You know, those type of questions. Um, So really get a toolbox of questions that are going to help you either minimize any challenges or maximize any potentials uh, and your vision and all those types of things. Uh, Because as I said, with when I see clients and when they've been in a pattern of behavior of minimizing their dreams, and maximizing their problems it's this whole strategy that they keep doing and they keep looping and looping and looping Um, the good news is that you know how to minimize the good news is that you do know how to maximize so it's just ensuring that you're minimizing the right things and maximizing the right things i trust that 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 is valuable and that makes sense for you i would love to know what your thoughts are um, pass this video on to anyone that you think would value from it. It's a simple, 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 simple stuff. And I know you might go, that's common sense. But what you need to do is capture those moments. And no one's immune from it. We are all immune from it. Whether there's coaches watching this, I know we're human. Everyone is not immune from maximizing the wrong things or minimizing the wrong things so it's just be it's just having mindfulness and having self-awareness and once we do that then we can be our own best coaches so i trust that that's been valuable guys Uh, please pop a message or a like or a love heart whatever you want to do Uh, and I trust that that's been valuable, and go practice it. Um, And those of you that want to write down some empowering questions, uh, empowering statements that you might want to put to yourself in those different moments, do that and have them as your little toolbox to help you in life. Thank you, guys. Have an awesome day. I am going to go on the rest of my walk and and ring my mum. And, uh, yeah, you guys have a great day. See you, guys.